I'm Eric Gubert from MJR Digital Cinemas, and you're watching Movie Show Plus. Hello, everybody. Tom Santilli here, Movie Show Plus film critic. Flying solo today because it's a special day, actually, uh, as this airs on September the 13th. Uh, it's actually National Celiac Awareness Day. What is celiac, you might ask? Well, glad you asked. We're going to be talking to a filmmaker of a new film called The Celiac Project and uh, lots of great information um, that touches my life personally. My wife, Danielle, uh, is celiac. So uh, this is something important to me and I think it's good to get awareness out there for all of you. But that's not all. We have lots more coming up. I have an interview uh, with Will Wheaton, who's a star of a new trippy thriller called Rent-A-Pal. And uh, Greg Russell has interviews as well, including with Hillary Swink. So stick around. I hope you enjoy this week's show and let's get to it. So here we are today. I am joined by a very special guest, uh, filmmaker Michael Frolicstein, who uh, has done the documentary The Celiac Project. Uh, Michael, first of all, thank you so much for, for joining me here on Movie Show Plus. Oh, Tom, it's an honor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, it, just as it happens, uh, when this is airing here in the Detroit area, I know people can, can see this all over the place on our website and everywhere else, but as this is airing on television right now, it a actually happens to be September 13th, which is National Celiac Awareness Day. Uh, your film, of course, is all about celiac disease and, and your, your personal experiences. Um, let me just start off by telling you that what, what I loved about the, the film is that it's not uh, a lecture. You know, a lot of these films uh, are kind of like here, you know, this is what it is and here is how it affects you. And here are like all these scientific facts. You really personalized uh, this disease um, with how it affected you and your family. And I thought that was a much more effective way of kind of getting it across. What can you tell people about the film and, and your experiences and the fact that you yourself have celiac? Well, first, thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate that. I thought it, it was challenging as a filmmaker to tackle something that's very medical, right? Yeah, uh, right. But I, I knew that what needed to ground the, the, the film was a story. And I was actually, the funny thing is, I didn't want to be at all part of the film. So <laughs> sure. I got diagnosed with celiac approximately 11 years ago. And I knew within about a month that I wanted to do something to raise awareness. So as I was making the film um, early on, uh, just before I started it, my, my daughter got diagnosed with celiac and it became much more personal to me. And then sure. after I had started, my nephew, who was mostly asymptomatic, got diagnosed. And then I reluctantly, um, at the urging of my wife, who was a co-producer, and another uh, friend, Jason Betke, who was my other producer, kind of got pushed in front of the camera, which I wasn't really uh, excited about, but mm -hmm. realized really the emotional center of the film was, was my story and my family's story. So th this is very personal to me, too, because my wife, uh, it has been diagnosed at, uh, with celiac about seven years ago. Uh, and uh, she watched the film with me too. And, and I guess talk about the balance there. Cause you know, I, I mentioned already about like the scientific talk versus like the personal story, but, but also you're kind of, there's a fine line cause you're trying to make the film for people that aren't aware you want to raise awareness. So, so people coming into this who don't know what celiac is, they kind of do need some facts and they need to have some context but also for uh, people like my wife, uh, she, what she got out of the film is she loved, it, it's like whenever you go through something, you think it's just you. And then when you see other people have gone through it too, it, it creates this really you know good feeling inside. So she felt this really good thing. When you're making a film and you're trying to hit a new audience, but also kind of embrace the celiac community, um, talk about that fine line. Well, I, 
I'm so happy that that was when I hear that someone with celiac or someone without celiac that that they have that reaction. I guess that is the thing that makes me happiest. Sure. I think what I'm doing, I'm trying to tell the story of celiac in a really relatable way. And, I, and I've gotten a lot of that feedback where people say exactly what you're telling me your wife said, which is, I, I don't feel so alone. Now you've put out into the world how, how the experience of living with celiac is, what it was like pre-diagnosis. And I just want to demystify that. I want to create a community around this. That's why the podcast now. So um, yeah, really my goal was, I, I was just on a, on a certain level, it's that sort of cliche, Tom, where it's like, if you can affect one person where uh, they don't feel so alone, I felt like some of my goals were if, if one person could see this and realize that's me like, and get sure. diagnosed. So sure. I've gotten that feedback that that's all happened. So it's really uh, a, a wonderful, um, really gratifying experience to hear that people, uh, you know, feel that, that, that sort of community feeling from watching this, that they're uh, part of something. And I really, I really want to create community around this. The, the movie is The Celiac Project. Uh, Michael, again, thank you so much for uh, sharing your story with the world, uh, getting this out uh, for people. I think it is uh, an important, uh, important thing for people to be aware of. And uh, I really uh, liked the film and um, enjoyed it. My wife, again, got a lot out of it as well. And uh, how, can, how can people find the film? How can people, you know, uh, find out more about your podcasts and other things you have going on. Okay, so our website is celiacproject.com and you can find links to uh, recently, the film is now on Amazon. The easiest way to see it is go on our website or go right on Amazon and just type in the Celiac Project. And if you like podcasts, we have a absolutely free weekly, it comes out every Wednesday morning, uh, the Celiac Project podcast wherever you find podcasts. Um, I believe we're the number one uh, celiac gluten-free podcast. Uh, Great. You can reach out to me. You can email me through the website. And uh, if anybody out there has any real specific questions, I'm happy to help any way I can. And great to see you back on earth after your <laughs> whirlwind trip. <laughs> yeah, but you, you might, I might be in space. You don't know. Yeah, that's it true. Is a, it is a link here, you know, via right. like satellite. And, and the way they were communicating with their family. Yep. Right on time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, right? That even if you're not going on a mission to Mars, there's a lot of people, again, that no matter like what gender you are, that you are having, you know, trying to find your and live your fullest purpose here on earth while, um, it, while also having a family and that might be your fullest purpose but it's just busy there's a lot to juggle and how do you juggle that and how are you present for both of those things and how do you show up for both of those things without being completely you know uh stressed out <laughs> i might have a niece with the same name so i told her i was interviewing you and she told me to tell you from one to leap into another hello really oh my gosh see i've heard people say they have family members with my name but i've never met another person Oh. I really, really want to. Well, you know, there's so many parallels between what's going on now and what we went through and what traveling to space must be like. I, um, shooting this series, uh, I my parents come from Ghana. They moved back to Ghana years ago. And so I see them every once, you know, once a year. Uh, but this time while we were shooting, I couldn't get back to see my parents' 50th anniversary and my dad's 80th birthday. And so that added an extra sort of... Um, heartbreak to me because again we're missing all of these things so imagine being so far away from earth that you can't even see the earth you can't even contact your mother because i could at least call them on the day and facetime with them but imagine if i can't even do that for me i was intrigued because this is a guy that's a loner he's he's a lonely person he he has nobody to love I'm, um, I represent China. I'm a Chinese um, astronaut and chemist and uh, supposed to be, I'm supposed to be the first human on Mars representing China. So it is very huge. Um, and um, um, she's um, 
very, um, she has a strong sense of duty to her mission and, and her family. And yet she has a secret and she has, a, um, she has personal desires. Oh, were you going to say something, Mark? Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, was oh, like, I, no, I, I just wanted to, don't tell me what happens in, in the last episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are going to love it. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm Andy. Thanks for being here today. Well, let's cut to the chase. I'm here to be your friend. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds great, Andy. All right, that's great. Well, I am excited. I am really excited. I mean, I got to be honest with you here. I have been waiting for this moment for what feels like forever. And gosh, I am just so pleased that you decided to take this journey with me. We're gonna to get to know each other. We're gonna talk about whatever you want, but more than anything, we're gonna have some fun. And hopefully, it's the start of a beautiful relationship. What do you say? Sounds fucking weird, Andy. Now, now, that, 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 listen, I, I know what you're thinking. I know. And hey, this is a little weird for me too. I've never done this either, right? so it's totally new for me. It's new for both of us. But I guess that just means we're in this together, right? You've got my back and I've got yours. Let's talk about rent pal uh, What can you tell people about this movie who might not know what it is? In the late 80s and, and, and early 90s, there were these video cassettes you could, you could check out of the video store that uh, were called Rent-A-Friend. And the idea was you would put the videotape in and press play and there would be a person on the screen and they would say, hi, my name's Andy, what's your name? Oh, what an interesting name. That's a great name. I have a cousin who's, who, who has your name. Yeah. So what are you doing today? Oh, that sounds really fun. Let me tell you what I did today. And that, that was a real thing that people really uh -huh. did. John Stevenson, the writer-director, had this idea. What if that tape ever talked back to you? What if something happened? Like, what if it knew something about you that it couldn't possibly know? What would right. that look like? What would happen? And Rent-A-Pal is the result. Classical acting approaches are, you know, when you when you dive into a character is you would look into your backstory and try to kind of formulate all this stuff. This is a very, very unique uh, acting opportunity, I would think, to be able to portray Andy. What was your what was your approach uh, towards this character that we really only get to know through uh, the main character's interactions with his TV screen? I just thought about what his primary motivations are. He's the monster in the house. He's the villain in the story. And he has to be, by the time we figure out that he's the monster in the house, we have to have been seduced by him. The audience has to feel betrayed and afraid. And to make that happen, I just tried to make him charming and gentle and welcoming and kind and insightful and all the things that a predator is when they're grooming someone. Mm. And uh, I've worked in the entertainment industry for 40 years and I've been around wow. plenty of predatory people. So I know what those personality constructs are. I decided that Andy at his core is very lonely, very insecure and incredibly manipulative. And uh, uh, I, I think that gave me as an actor the ability to really trust the performance because uh, John was gonna be able to pick whatever he wanted when he went to edit the film. He was able to pick everything out and build this complex, really terrifying, contradictory character out of all those different choices we made. You're just drunk with infatuation for some cute girl to be there for each other. We don't need her. We have each other. When all the chips are down. You've taken everything from me. Andy, I need up. That's why I'm here for you, pal. How would you like to see the city of Detroit like you've never seen it before? On Russell Brothers City Tours, we take you to the places that you know, but the fun part is we take you to places that you probably don't know. 
Hi, I'm Greg Russell of Russell Brothers City Tours. Come on, let's get on board and take a tour of the city of Detroit. Where Russell Brothers City Tours started was actually in the winter of 2017. My wife and I and our daughter and her husband were at an event downtown Detroit. So when heading back home, I always ask, can I take the scenic route, which means just going Woodward straight north. Normally, my wife would always say, just take the freeway. But this time, I think it was my holiday gift. So she said, go ahead and take your uh, scenic route. So as we're going up Woodward, I'm pointing out certain places and certain things, what they used to be, what used to be here, what happened in certain things. And my daughter was going, Pop, you know so much about the city, why don't you just give a tour? And it made me think, you know what? That's a good idea. So I got home and I called my brother Cliff Russell, and some of you may remember Cliff, he was a guy who knew everything about the city of Detroit, was deeply involved with the community. So I called him and I told him the idea, and he said, okay, hey Greg, you put it together and I'll be there. So we were all set, we were gonna do it in 2018. Well, unfortunately in February of 2018, my brother Cliff passed away from a heart attack and it was devastating to our family, but it made me think even more about doing this tour. And that's why it's still called Russell Brothers City Tours. It is my tribute and my honor to my brother. So when I go around town, I tell people all about the places here and even talk about some of the stuff that Cliff did in the community. People sometimes ask, what's the difference between our company as compared to other tour companies? Well, one thing that we like to do is show you stuff that we're pretty sure you probably never have seen or heard of in the city of Detroit. Also, we let you at times customize your own tour. There might be some particular things that you want to see where we don't just say, okay, no, we're stuck to our schedule and our thing. You want to go see something, we will take you to see it. We'd love to hear from you. Just give us a call, 313-399-0683 or go to our website, Russell Brothers City Tours or on all social media. Come on, we'd love to take you for a ride. A Dream Limousine continues to be Metro Detroit's finest luxury transportation service. 734-542-6800. Offering late model luxury SUVs to brand new party buses that seat up to 34 passengers. 734-542-6800. Including the one-of-a-kind Escalade stretch with the exciting jet door. Call 734-542-6800. That's 734-542-6800. A Dream Limousine. And welcome back to Movie Show Plus. I'm Greg Russell, joined by a very special guest, nice guy, a buddy, Luke from the Royal Star Film Festival. Luke, good to see you. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me back. You got it. Well, since the last time you and I spoke, things, of course, have changed a lot. So tell us now about your film festival and what's going on with it. Well, we opened up, well, I, I don't know when this plays, but like we opened up September 3rd uh, at the Novi Imagine Drive-In Theater, and it was wonderful. We hosted the 48-hour, Detroit 48-hour film project and uh, showed all their films. Um, lots of people showed up. It was a good time. Everybody's, uh, you know, watching from their cars or you know, tailgating on the outside of their cars and chairs. It was fun. Our next, our next couple of films that we have are on Thursday nights in September. So every Thursday night in September, we have um, a film or a bunch of films we're showing. They start around nine o'clock, but yeah. I urge people to get there at seven. Uh -huh. Because it takes time to, for people to park. It's not like going oh, yeah. to like the regular movie theaters. You have to take your vehicle. It, you're assigned a parking spot. Um, and imagine it's really awesome. You don't even have to get out of your car. You, you just look up the menu. Oh, okay. Or like popcorn on your phone, and uh, you can request it that way, and they bring it to your car if you want to. To do this again was so nostalgic for me, and it was it gave me chills. I'm just I was a lot of the people on my crew are like in their twenties. I'm like, you don't understand. I used to do this. We used to sit in like my parents. Uh, the van and just you you back in ever do that with the oh, van yeah, and the doors you open lift in the back the, yeah the, yep and you just sit in the back of the van and and you're uh, i was a little so it was probably like a a sleeping bag or something <laughs> and it would be like me and my sister and our family watching like usually a double feature that's how right. they got us to oh, go yeah. that's when my parents would pay the money back in the day <laughs> but um yeah no it was it was a fun experience i i come out and, and check it out at the imagine theaters in novi uh, we are, like I said, if you want to do the part of the festival, you can go to royalstar.org. That's with two R's and get your tickets there for the drive-in nights. It's a fun time. And like you said, just going to the drive-in. Luke, you just 
put so many stories in my head. <laughs> so I know. I, it was so much fun. But this is great. Well, best of luck. You know we're going to have you on again. So All right. I look forward to it. This is fun. Absolutely. We'll talk to you again very soon. Sort of a slow week for releases right now, uh, not just theatrically, but also streaming. Uh, but there are a couple to get to, and here are my reviews. First up is The Broken Hearts Gallery. It's a young adult romantic comedy that's produced by Selena Gomez and stars Geraldine Viswanathan, Molly Gordon, and Hamilton star Philippa Sue. These might be three of the most talented, up and coming actresses in Hollywood but I felt like this wasn't exactly the correct vehicle for them to showcase their tremendous talents. Viswanathan stars as Lucy, who keeps items from each of her failed relationships, eventually creating a shrine of sorts that she calls the Broken Hearts Gallery, which inspires discarded single people all over the city to show up and add to the collection. All the while, Lucy falls in love with a new boy while trying to get over her most recent ex. The overarching theme is about letting go and moving on, and that's exactly what I wanted to do with this movie. I'm not made to feel old all that often while watching movies, but I have a feeling that this movie isn't for me, and that a 20-something crowd might be more in tune with the film's overall snarky attitude. Of course, the best romantic comedies are universally relatable, and I felt like there were just too many cliches, too many rom-com stereotypes for this one to be all that memorable or effective. A quick note, this movie is opening theatrically, meaning that right now in Michigan, you can look for it at the drive-ins as it's not available immediately for streaming. I give The Broken Hearts Gallery a C. One film that is coming to streaming this weekend is a surprisingly effective low-budget thriller called Rent-A-Pal. Believe it or not, back in 1990 when this movie was set, before Match.com and online dating, people would use matchmaking services that provided short videos of prospective matches via VHS tapes. A lonely bachelor named David, played by Brian Landis Falcons, ends up picking up a tape that says Rent-A-Pal on it, and when he pops the tape in his VHS, he meets Andy, played by Will Wheaton, who at first gives some generic responses as an on-screen friend, but who soon seems to be able to communicate directly with David through the television set. It's a slow building, tense movie that pulls you in and keeps you engaged. However, the ending is a bit disappointing and ends up covering all too familiar ground for the genre. Still, I think Renapal is pretty interesting and worth checking out, and I give it a B. For more detailed reviews of these and other movies, please check me out on Rotten Tomatoes. You can go to the site, search the critics list to find Tom Santilli, and you can scroll through all of my recent and not so recent reviews. Another good way to find my stuff is to follow me on Twitter, at Tom Santilli, or go to the website, movieshowplus.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Movie Show Plus. I'm Greg Russell, and as you know, not only do we talk movies, but we also talk about other different things as well. As we all know, nowadays we all have to be very, very careful, you know, with the things we touch, the things we do, and sometimes you just can't find your sanitizer in your pocket or your purse. Well, my next two guests, Steve and Yuri, have come up with a brand new product that makes it so simple, and the best part, you won't even notice it half the time. Steve, Yuri, good to see you guys. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Greg. Great to see you. Great to see you. Now, you've come up with this new product. It's called Freeband, and it basically got, folks, it looks like, you know, one of the smart watches or exercise watches that you'd wear. There you go, Yuri. But you fill it with hand sanitizer, push the button right into your palm, boom, and you're set to go. Now, how did you guys come up with this idea? So uh, I was in Sundance with my movie Tesla with Ethan Hawke, and uh, we were um, planning to go to shoot the next Ethan Hawke movie, uh, which is a Tennessee Williams uh, adaptation of Camino Real. Oh, okay. And we said, let's wait for two weeks and then we can go to Brazil and start scouting and, and then move to production. And what happened is the corona hit just, uh, just at that time and everything stopped. All production stopped, all, er, everything. Just nobody could travel anywhere, as, as you well know, and no movies were produced. So I was thinking, okay, production will resume. 
How can I keep my cast and crew safe when production eventually resumes? And I thought of something that's practical, that's handy, that people can wear on their hand and it could be, they can use the hand on set because as you know, on set, people are using all the time their hands. Right. And I came up with Freeband. And uh, there you go, here you have it. All right, yeah, it, it, like I said, it's fashionable, it looks good. And you know, you always know where it is. And, and Steve, how about you? How did you get involved with the project? I've known, I've known Uri for over 30 years and Uri's had some, uh, aside from making great movies, he's come up with some great inventions. And when Uri told me about this, having children, having three kids and living in New York City, with kids going back to school and businesses starting to open up, I said, what a phenomenal gift we can actually provide people. And we wanted to provide people, not necessarily with a hand sanitizer dispenser, what we wanted to do was provide people with more of a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And we called it Freeband because as we begin to integrate back into society, we go to our houses of worship or we go to our business places or we go to school, be free to leave your house and be free knowing with less fear that if you inadvertently or intentionally touch something, you give somebody your credit card, you go to the gas pump, you, you, your hands immediately can be cleaned without having to rifle through your, your shirt pockets, your pant pockets, your pocketbooks or your backpack. You touch something that's a little, I don't know what, you go into the subway, right. you touch something that maybe you're a little spooked about, bam, put it there, squeeze, and you're done. Like I said, it's a great idea. It just like you said, just something so simple. You know, <laughs> you put it on in the morning, go, you don't think about it till you need to use it, and boom, it's right Damn. there. <laughs> I love it. Check out MovieshowPlus.com to watch this episode online and for exclusive content, extended interviews with Greg Russell, and a complete archive of movie reviews with Tom Santilli. Also, make sure to like and follow us on social media and on our Movie Show Plus YouTube channel. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.